I will um, present um, uh, track A, so basic science and the highlights of ICE 2019 in Mexico. I uh, was fortunate to attend and present as well. Next slide, please. So I will present on a little bit on cellular reservoirs on a new uh, latency reversal agent uh, that's very promising, um, on a remission, and on a little bit about the bus of the San Francisco patient the hormonal influences of HIV and a little bit on primary infection. Next slide, please. So HIV, as we all know, enters through mucosal tissue um, after sexual intercourse, and there it encounters uh, mucosal cells such as macrophages. And it's always been a little bit controversial if these macrophages form a viral reservoir. However, a recent research by Ganor and um, using penile urethral cells, and these were sampled after gender reassignment surgery, show that these cells, these macrophages, contain replication complement HIV DNA. So they did this in a cohort of 20 persons with HIV, and they sampled uh, for HIV DNA and RNA, and they only found three um, of these tissues to be positive for HIV DNA. So from these three tissues, they sorted T cells and macrophages. And they used viral outgrowth assays specifically for macrophages or T cells to see where the virus hides. And they only um, were able to induce viral transcription um, in macrophages by stimulating by uh, LPS. So they show that HIV in these macrophages form a reservoir um, with mucosal tissues. And these cells are known to be long lived and self renewing. And these cells are also resistant to um, CTL killing, so to CD8 killing. Next slide, please. So if you want to get rid of this reservoir um, by shock and kill method, you have to consider a few things. So uh, the normal latency reversal agents, so as HDEC inhibitors or TCR activators, uh, won't really work in macrophages. And the best candidate for activating or the shock would be a toll like receptor 4 agonist. So a toll like receptor 4 recognizes LPS and then activates the macrophage. Also, killing uh, would be a bit different and difficult since um, macrophages are resistant to cytopathic effect and um, killing by CTLs. So maybe pro apoptotic molecules or immune checkpoint inhibitors um, would uh, utilize the kill in, these, in this reservoir. Next slide. So another cellular reservoir that uh, might in, uh, be more difficult to get rid of is naive C4 T cells. So naive CD4 T cells have been shown by uh, Venanti in this presentation um, to harbor um, intact proviruses. And he showed that although these cells have a low frequency of integrated HIV, they have a higher percentage of intact proviruses in the Eve cells um, than in memory T cells. So they investigate this in two males on antiretrovirals, and they sample two years and nine years after antiretrovirals. And from the PBMCs, they sorted CD4 T cells in uh, different T cell subsets, and then investigated uh, if the virus was intact by a near full length proviral sequencing assay. What they initially observed is that the reservoir in the Eve cells was 20 fold uh, less in memory and uh, subsets, and also clonal expansion um, in this uh, by viral sequencing um, increases in more differentiated cells and was not observed in hardly observed in Eve cells. And we also observed the same thing by integration site sequencing in a different cohort. So viral sequencing demonstrated that Eve cells were enriched for intact provirus compared to memory T cell subsets, and over time this was very stable. So given their long half-life and lower metabolic activity, the reservoir in the Eve C4 T cells may represent a unique hurdle and maybe a more difficult hurdle to reactivate for HIV eradication. Next slide, please. One of the LRAs that might do the trick is AZD5582. This is a novel SMAC mimetic, and SMAC stands for second mitochondrial derived activator of gas bases. And AZD um, is the most potent SMAC mimetic um, uh, um, of the SMAC mimetics, and it activates NF kappa B through the non canonical pathway. And what is observed by Margolis is that it has a slower 
but longer lasting effect than other latency reversal agents. And it reactivates HP latency quite potent in cell lines and CD4 T cells from suppressed patient ex vivo. And what is very interesting is that the magnematics show a less of target effect compared to PKSA agonists that act on the canonical pathway of nf b So they have less effect on host gene transcription. So they turn less genes on and also less genes off. And what they observed as well is that magnematics in humanized infected mice on art resulted in varemia without a cytokine storm and also in an SRV model of macaques on art, so they were suppressed, that's a viral rebound in all animals. And they saw um, RNA in lymph nodes increase in these macaques and also RNA of HIV increase in all the tissues of the mice. So smegmomatics may be the next class of LRAs and AZD uh, looks to be very promising and further research is warranted. Next slide, please. So uh, another way to inhibit um, um, viral expression or to reach remission is protein neutralizing antibodies. And these antibodies neutralize a broad range of HIV subtypes uh, and are often quite potent. So there is a mutation in the FC receptor of these protein neutralizing antibodies, which is called LS. And these increase the half-life of these antibodies. So this is a study of PRCO1. LS and PRCO7 LS, and with increased half life. The antis, these antibodies bind the CD4 receptor of GP120. This is a phase one single dose safety study in 16 varemix HIV positive adults. Go back. Seven were PRCO1, and the nine were received PRCO7. Uh, forward. Yes. So both antibodies were safe and well tolerated at 40 milligrams per uh, 40 milligrams per uh, kilogram. And what was interesting is that FreeRCR7 had a greater reduction of HIV RNA in um, varemic uh, people. So eight of eight of nine individuals studied had a 1.2 log reduction after seven days post infusion. And this uh, compound, so this antibody. And now goes into a clinical trial with a long acting integrase inhibitor. Next slide, please. So, now a little bit about the bus that was um, at IS about the San Francisco patients. So, Shu Yu from the Reagan Institute presented a study in elite controllers and um, normal progressors. And they looked at intact HIV DNA in um, BBMCs. So in the graph, you see in green, the elite controllers that show to have less intact ATV DNA than in pink, uh, the normal progressors. And one of them is the red arrow was below the limit of detection. So this individual has been diagnosed in 1992 and but has never been treated with antiretrovirals and is an elite controller and has 24 years of recorded undetected bovaremia and 44, 34 viral load tests were all below the limit of detection. So with their new assay of um, viral load of pro-viral sequencing and integration site sequencing of the same cell, they um, detected no intact genome um, in over 1.5 billion PBMCs. So they sequenced quite a lot. And even more, they have no replication competent AGB um, detected in 340 million resting CD4 T cells using a quantitative viral outgrowth assay. And as well, no intact pro-virus in 14 million resting CD4 T cells was detected by a new intact pro-viral DNA assay by Dropley Digital PCR. So the San Francisco patient might have cleared um, replication competent virus and approached a sterilizing cure of HIV through natural immunity. And this uh, individual is likely to be studied further see what lessons can be learned and if we can um, exploit the findings in this individual. Next slide, please. Another uh, interesting uh, presentation was about hormonal influence on HIV. 
So we know that estrogen binds to the provirus and then inhibits uh, HIV transcription, which might result in an observed lower reservoir in women compared to men. So uh, Garn presented um, a short presentation about sampling of 12 reproductive age-matched women and men and longitudinal sampling of women during menopause. And he um, subjected the cells that they extracted from these individuals to HIV uh, envelope mRNA PCR. And they did this in activated cells with and without estro estrogen. Um, if we look at the left graph, we see that um, in cells with valtrekivir, so with antiretrovirals, we see that um, estrogen inhibits um, viral reactivation. And in the left part, without any antiretrovirals, we see that in cells from women, estrogen inhibits viral reactivation, but also um, viral spread because there's no antiretrovirals. And in the right graph, we see that during or prior or during or post um, menopause, we see that there's an increase in HIV expressing uh, cells. So estrogen might be a good target um, to inhibit, to induce latency reversal, especially in women. Next slide, please. So the last um, talk I'd like to talk about is the CTL response in patients that are treated early. So Lily Troutman showed that um, the CTL, so CD8 cells, that should kill infected cells, um, recognize, um, have the same breath already in FIBIC1 as um, they would have during chronic infection. However, they are less exhausted and can proliferate and can uh, kill better as shown in the left graph where they extract the CD8 cells and uh, again uh, showed HIV to them and they see, see that these cells kill better than from chronics. However, in the right graph, we see that these cells are less in number. So in FIBIC stage one, which is very early, there are not a lot of CD8 T cells. So we hope that we can then during an um, early infection, we can still have a good breath and good killing, but maybe then increase the number of these cells. Next slide. So there are promising developing, uh, in, especially in latency reversal agents. So the smegmatic is very promising. And the VRCO1, the new antibody, um, also seems to work. The estrogen receptor is an attractive target. And um, the the San Francisco patients might uh, show us good lessons for where to go. Thank you.